Do you want to know what makes an eyelid grow? Then everybody watch Dean Show, The Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Very, very exciting show today. A very, very important topic was America founded as a Christian nation. Some people might have you believe that it was. In, in actuality, it wasn't. And we're going to be talking to a Christian scholar from the Harvard Divinity School, Dr. Gerald Dirks, when we come back here on the Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God, and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. And peace with you, brother. I greet you with the greetings of Jesus, Moses, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Ah. And all of them. All of them. Yes, and they all greeted with this, this greeting. Peace. This, yeah, it's peace. in the Bible, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, we look at the Jews, they still say shalom. Shalom. Uh, which is peace. Yeah, and we say salam. Which is peace. Which derives, it's in Islam, and that's what we're striving for, to have peace with our Creator, peace with ourselves, and peace with humanity. Correct. And that's why we're here doing this program, because sharing is caring. Absolutely. And we're trying to share, and there are, is a lot of misinformation. So unless we sit with people of knowledge such as yourself, we're not going to learn. So the million-dollar question now, was America actually founded as a Christian state? No, it's not. But, but before we get into that, let me go back to your, your introduction a little bit ago. I took my master's degree in divinity from Harvard Divinity School. Yes. I am not affiliated with Harvard Divinity School yeah. at, at the current time. No, uh, the United States was not founded as a Christian nation. And we can demonstrate this in several different ways. First of all, we can look at the religious beliefs of uh, the majority uh, common folk of America at the time of this country's founding. Secondly, we can look at the religious beliefs of the founding fathers of America. Thirdly, we can look at uh, official documents of the various states and uh, of the United States in particular. But let's start with the religious beliefs of the American public at large at the time this country was founded. Now, those people who would say America was founded as a Christian nation would have you believe you know, that there was a great majority of Christians in this country at the beginning. In fact, if we look during the colonial period, the most optimistic estimates are that only 15%, that's one five, 15% of the majority white population had membership in a Christian church. Only? Only 15%. 15%. During the colonial period, we can break it down more specifically, in New England, about 15% had membership in a Christian church. In the middle colonies, that fell down to um, around 7%. And in the South, that percentage was even lower. Yes. Now, bear in mind that we're talking only about church membership of the majority white population. Mm -hmm. If we include in our population figures, African-American and African slaves and American Indians at that time period, those percentages would go down even further mm -hmm. because those are only for the white majority adult population at that time. So what, what was the typical belief system? What was it, yes. Okay, basically it was a primitive animism. It was a mixture of superstition and sort of primitive magical beliefs in which people practiced and believed in divination uh, via seer stones and divining rods, uh, fortune telling, palmistry, astrology, uh, incantations and spells, a great deal of belief in terms of spirits who hid treasures at various mountains and hills and guarded them and yeah. you needed all sorts of magical incantations to locate the treasure, etc. So it, it was a primitive form of uh, animism, basically, and superstition mm -hmm. yeah. that was common among the majority population. 
Now, among the intellectual elite, we run into something very different. Among the intellectual elite, we confront deism. Now, deism was a religious belief that grew out of the European Enlightenment. Uh, they believed that there was an impersonal creator God who basically established a rational universe and then left it, yeah. hands off it from that point. Yeah. So, yeah, one God, but a God that was totally impersonal and didn't interact with creation. You said figure it out on your own. Figure it out on your own. This is illogical. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. So there's an impersonal God. They typically believe that there was life after death, um, and rewards and punishments would be distributed according to one's deeds and works on earth. Um, certainly they denied uh, the Trinity. They denied the divinity of Jesus. Uh, and usually they denied any, any revelation from God. At what point was this about in history? What? Well, again, this was a very uh, popular movement among the intellectual elite from the time of the European Enlightenment on into the early 19th century here in America. Okay, so you're at a, you said 15% and the rest are believing these beliefs. Either primitive animism, that'd be the majority of, of the common folk, yeah. and among the intellectual elite, uh, yeah. deism was yeah. uh, flourishing. Um, and we can see that particularly in terms of, of uh, the founding fathers of America, mm -hmm. yeah. because by and large they, they were representing the intellectual elite. You know, in our last presidential election, one of the candidates made a comment yeah. and said, you know, I, I don't think I could have voted for anyone for president who wasn't a, a Christian. Yes. It's interesting to note for whom this person would not have voted. Tell us. Because none, none of our first seven presidents belonged to a church upon becoming president of this country. None of them, the first seven. None of the first seven. And none of the first six were Orthodox Christians. So let's, so the first seven, what, starting with George Washington? George Washington was a deist. Was a deist. He was a deist. He wasn't a Christian. No, he denied the resurrection and divinity of Jesus. George Washington, that's George the Washington. first president. Yes. And people can check this up and verify. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now the and, second one? Oh, no, well, let's stick with Washington okay. to show you how far it goes. Tell us. Now Washington's wife did go to church. She, she was a Christian. And Washington, being a good husband, would occasionally accompany his wife to church. Yeah. But we have recorded in, in the history that when they started to do Holy Communion, or the Eucharist, as it's called in Christian worship service, Washington would get up from his pew and walk out of the church. He'd walk out. Walk out and wait for his wife outside. This but is he, recorded, documented. Yes, he, he refused to participate in it. Yeah. yeah. So... That's George Washington. Let's, let's look at our second president, John Adams. Yes. John Adams was an early Unitarian. Mm -hmm. He denied the Trinity. He denied the divinity of Jesus. That's the same that thing that we as Muslims do. Yeah. Now, he unfortunately went further, and he denied that there was such a thing as eternal damnation. Uh, he denied the concept of original sin, uh, and he denied the concept of vicarious atonement for sin. Yeah. So, I mean, this is hardly an Orthodox Christian. He sounds more like in tune with what Islam is about. Absolutely. There, there might with, have with, to be with, some, some fine tuning. With the exception of yeah, that with, eternal with damnation. The, with, yeah, with the yeah, exception. But. Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, uh, Adams had some rather um, negative comments to make about American Bible societies. <laughs> and, and let me read a quote to you. Please tell us. From, from Adams. Um, and, and I'm quoting word for word here. This is from a letter he wrote to Stephen Sewell in May, on May 30th, 1821. Second President of the United Second States. Second President of the United States. Bible societies have been invented by deeper politicians still to divert mankind from the study and pursuit of their natural rights. I wish societies were formed in India, China, and Turkey to send us gratis translations of their sacred books. Here's a second president of the United States. Wow. Saying, you know, I wish those Muslims over there in Turkey would send us some free translations of the Quran. The second president of the United States. Yeah. Now someone's like, hold up, hold up. This guy just making this stuff up. What do you got to say about that? What you well, you, you can check it out. Uh, there's a book uh, that I would recommend people get if they question this. It's called Faith of Our Fathers, Religion and the New Nation published by Harper and Rowe in 1987. It's by uh, E.S. Uh, Gastad. So the information is there. 
It's in the public domain, want. sure. Okay, let, let, let's take a break there, and we're mm -hmm. going to be back with more here with Dr. Gerald Dirks. Be right back. He is the maintainer. Coming to the truth requires two things. It requires deep thinking that you've already done, but it requires another step, and that's courage. If you have the truth, but you don't have courage, you won't stand up for the truth. And that's as good as standing up for falsehood. I, I would say this thing that you just told me, it's not in the scripture. And they would say, a marginal note added by a scribe, yeah, okay, we know that. And I'd be thinking, if you know this is not the Bible, why are you preaching it as if it's gospel truth? Millions of innocent men, women, and children since the introduction of Christianity have been burned, tortured, fined, and imprisoned, yet we have not advanced one inch toward uniformity. What has been the effect of coercion to make one half of the world fools and the other half hypocrites? Thomas Jefferson, founding father. During almost 15 centuries, has the legal establishment of Christianity been on trial? What has been its fruits? More or less, in all places, pride and indolence in the clergy, ignorance and servility in the laity, in both superstition, bigotry, and persecution. James Madison. I have found Christian dogma unintelligible. Early in life, I absenteed myself from Christian assemblies. Lighthouses are more helpful than churches. Benjamin Franklin. The government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. John Adams. Whenever we read the obscene stories, the voluptuous debaucheries, the cruel and torturous executions, the unrelenting vindictiveness with which more than half the Bible is filled, it would be more consistent that we called it the word of a demon than we call it the word of God. It is a history of wickedness that has served to corrupt and brutalize mankind. Back here on The Dean Show, we love our brothers in humanity and we care that's why we share and we're reaching out to all of the people all around the globe and one of the myths is that america was founded as a christian state and that is a myth absolutely it's a myth and, and it's a total myth yeah and, and you, we left off with uh, presidents of the united states yeah, and you mentioned we, six or seven of them uh let's continue on we left off uh we well, talked about george washington and john adams and, yeah. and we can turn to thomas jefferson but, but before we go to thomas jefferson yeah. you left off it's interesting that the quote he was saying that they should send us some quran something like that <laughs> what, what did he say? Well, the word for word is uh he was saying uh, i wish societies were formed in india china and turkey to send us gratis translations of their sacred books well turkey that's muslims that would be the quran that and the quran is the verbatim word of god yes you should read the Quran. Take advice from the second president of the United States. Continue more, please. Okay, well, let's turn to the third president, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. It, uh, Jefferson, again, was a deist. He was not a Christian. In fact, he had some really anti-Christian comments to the, make. The third president of the, the United States. The third president. States. For example, he called the Trinity a, and I'm quoting here, hocus pocus phantasm of a god. This is the president of the United States. And then went on to call the Trinity mere abracadabra. These are the words of Thomas Jefferson. You didn't say it, I didn't say it. No, no, this, this, is, this, is, what he said. this is what Jefferson said. Yeah. And then he compared the believers in the Trinity to mentally ill patients in Bedlam. Thomas Jefferson, Thomas former Jefferson. president of the United States. Third of president of the United States, yeah. Okay, continue on. Fourth president, anyone else? You know, Jefferson uh, referred to the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, and uh, again, I'm quoting directly from Thomas Jefferson. He's saying uh, it was, quote, merely the ravings of a maniac, no more worthy nor capable of explanation than the incoherencies of our own nightly dreams. What has no meaning admits no explanation. Yeah. So, you know, Jefferson not only was not a Christian, he was actually anti-Christian. Yeah. As, as we can see from um, comments that, 
and I want to stress this, that he made, that we as Muslims are not making. We're not but making. But that Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States, made yeah. in his own personal attacks against Christianity. So Jefferson, a deist. Yeah. Washington was a deist. Adams was an early Unitarian. James Madison, fourth president, once again a deist. Um, Benjamin Franklin, one of our founding fathers, a deist. Thomas Paine, who wrote the Common Sense, the pamphlet that probably, you know, provoked American independence, was a deist. Ethan Allen was a deist. John Quincy Adams, our sixth president of the United States, who was a Unitarian, who refused, uh, most people are going to be shocked by this, refused to take his oath of office on a Bible, insisting instead that he place his hand on a book of U.S. law. Wow. So, was these, are, these are amazing facts that many people don't know about. Yeah, but they're all recorded. They're all yeah. out there. Um, America was not founded as a Christian nation. Period. Period. We, we can look at uh, some early state and, and constitutions and declarations of rights, etc. Um, you know, there was, there was great variation among the 13 original uh, colonies and states in terms of their specific uh, state constitutions. But it's interesting to note that out of the original 13, there was only one that uh, established Christianity uh, as a state religion, and that was South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then they were establishing only Protestant Christianity uh, as a state religion. But on the flip side, many of the early state constitutions banned Christian ministers from holding political office. So Delaware, its constitutions of 1776 and 1792, Georgia in 1777 and again in 1789 and 1798, Kentucky in 1792, New York in 1777, North Carolina in 1776, South Carolina in 1778, even though they established Protestant Christianity as the state religion, Tennessee in 1796 and Virginia in 1786, all banned Christian ministers from holding political office. Not founded on the Christian state. Just to make a, yeah. go on a tangent for a second, we, as ones who have submitted to the one God, the same way Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, all the message, they submitted to the one God. That's yeah. all we're trying to do. We're not anti-Christ. No, 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 no. And, and again, you know, the, the comments that were made by Jefferson, made by Adams, those are those, their comments. Yeah. Uh, you know, I quoted them, but they're not my comments. Yes. They're Jefferson's comments. They're Adams' comments. Because we can't be Muslims unless we love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and as Muslims, we do not attack other religions as yeah. well. You know, the Quran in the second chapter has this wonderful statement about freedom of religion yeah. where it says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Yes. Period. And, you know, and, and it also says, doesn't the God Almighty say to bring forth your evidence if you're claiming the truth? So mm -hmm. if you say something, now we're saying, hold on, yeah. this is not true. If you're saying that America, which we love, we live in it and respect, yeah. and we're law-abiding citizens, and we share and we care, and now if you're saying that it was founded on a Christian nation, we're saying, hold on, it's not the case, and we're bringing forth the evidence to prove it. Sure. Yeah. And we can look at the official documents of the United States of yeah. America as well. Um, you know, read the Declaration of Independence. There's not one mention of Jesus Christ in the Declaration of Independence anywhere. Mm -hmm. This doesn't sound like a Christian nation. Read the Constitution. Um, there's no mention of Jesus Christ or even of God in the Constitution. In the Declaration of Independence, when there is a reference to God, it's usually in the impersonal terms of the deists. You know, nature's God, quote unquote. Uh, their creator, quote-unquote, supreme judge of the world, quote-unquote. These were catchphrases of the deists, mm -hmm. and these are the terms that we see appearing in the Declaration of Independence. Mm. Uh, continue on. Tell us more, please. This is very, very enlightening and interesting. Well, in terms of the Constitution, as I mentioned, there, there's no reference to God whatsoever yeah. in the Constitution. But, uh, How about the Pledge of Allegiance? Well, the Pledge of Allegiance is much, <laughs> much later. <laughs> How much later? Than much, this much later. We're not talking about the founding of the country yeah. when we're talking about the Pledge of Allegiance. 
the Constitution tells us, you know, that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, as well as laws that are passed by Congress and official treaties, which the United States has entered into. And with that in mind, there's one treaty in particular that we need to look at. Which one is that? Which is the 1797 Treaty of Tripoli. Now, this treaty was drafted when George Washington was still president. It was unanimously approved by the United States Senate. Now, when's the last time the United States Senate was unanimous about anything? Yeah, no, no, no. But this treaty was unanimously approved by the United States Senate and was signed by President John Adams, our second president. Now, what makes this treaty so special in terms of our present discussion is the 11th article. And again, let me just read it verbatim. Article 11. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslimen, Muslims, and as said states never entered into any way or act of hostility against any Mohammedan nation, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. Uh, this was uh, Tripoli, what today we would call Morocco, and the United States, the Treaty of 1797. Direct statement, as the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. Now, this was an official treaty of the United States. This was the law of the land, yeah. according to the Constitution. And it's saying right here that it was not it was founded not. as a Christian nation. Furthermore, drafted under Washington, unanimously approved by the United States Senate. Yeah. There wasn't one senator who voted against this because of this article. Not one. Not one. It was unanimous. So why do people push this idea? Uh, it's an attempt to rewrite history. Mm. You know, it's an attempt to rewrite history. People focus on things like the pilgrims coming to America or Catholics coming to America in the middle colonies, etc. Quakers coming to Pennsylvania, etc. Uh, and they say, well, you know, this was established as a Christian nation. Yeah. But what they fail to realize is that in almost all of these cases, these Christian groups that were coming to America were fleeing from religious persecution in Europe. Yeah. And who was persecuting them in Europe? Who? Other Christians. Other Christians were persecuting Christians. Sure. And so they were fleeing to, the, to America. They wanted to distance. Yeah, Muslims weren't persecuting No, them. no, it wasn't no. Muslims. Yeah. Uh, it was other Christians were persecuting wow. them. And so even those who were Christians wanted to make sure that you were not setting up any kind of a theocracy in this yeah. country. Yeah. They wanted that great division between church and state. But isn't it known through history, this is another topic of itself, that Muslims, Jews, and Christians, when Muslims ruled, they were living in peace? Abs well, in most places, yes. Yeah. You know, and, and Muslim Andalusia would be the shining example of that. That's amazing. Where could people get a hold of you if they want to invite you to come and give a, a big uh, lecture on this topic or any other topics? Uh, they can contact me at my website, which is Dirks Online Books. That's all one word, DirksOnlineBooks.com, and that's Dirks, D-I-R-K-S. Thank you so much. May God Almighty, the Creator, reward you oh, for being with you, us. Brother. Thank you so much. And we got to clear another misconception and another myth out there, and all it took was for you to tune into The Dean Show and continue tuning in to learn more about this beautiful way of life and other important facts from history, today and time, and other things that will enlighten you, brighten you, and maybe even cause you to come and to join the family of over 1.5 billion across the world. If you'd like to read the verbatim Word of God to learn more of Islam, dial the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. And we hope to see you again next time here on The Dean Show. We started with peace, we end with peace. Peace be unto you. Salam alaikum. created the universe to him belong the heavens and the earth the ever-living he is the first 
is the owner of mercy. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worshiping other than Allah. There is none greater than the 